Just like humans, a dog's skin can get irritated for a number of reasons. For us owners, it can be a bit alarming to suddenly see these symptoms appear. So tell me, Dr. Richard Thomas, what are some common skin conditions for dogs? I mean, definitely in cans, the most common ones are gonna be our uh, one called atopic dermatitis, which is inhaled oh. allergies. And the other one is contact allergies, where it's like allergens uh, get in direct contact with the skin and trigger a, a massive inflammatory reaction. So they're both allergies, but just slightly different ways in which they work in the body. Mm. But they're by far and away the most common two that we see in terms of skin conditions. So how can they be treated then? If they're different, do you still treat them the same? Uh, curiously, there's majority overlap in the treatment. So thankfully, diagnosis may be a slightly moot point. Uh, many, many things we look at in terms of helping our allergic dogs. I think if we were to start off with, uh, let's say the more like gentle home therapies, okay? The more, not even natural therapies, but the less medical stuff to start mm -hmm. with. Okay, very first thing would be we sleep our dog indoors, so they're not being bitten by insects all night. Yep. Yeah, that alone will help out a lot of dogs. Sometimes uh, giving them a diet that's quite high in fish, so we have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in the diet, uh, that can reduce a little bit of irritation. So it doesn't make a major difference, but it's something side effect free that we know can help them out. Uh, treating for fleas is a very, very important very first step. So a lot of these dogs with allergies, they're not covered in fleas, but if they just have a single flea bite, they'll itch for something like you know, three weeks at a time from a single bite. And so that they have what's called a flea hypersensitivity. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that we're you know, really uh, on top of our, our good flea control as well. And so we, we obviously recommend a couple of pretty good products at the clinic. So good flea control is important. We also look at some soothing shampoos uh, because if we give them sort of too many shampoos, we can actually strip all of the protective oils from their coat. Mm. And so we find that using, you know, soothing shampoos and especially uh, very oily soothing conditioners, uh, they can help to relieve irritation quite well as well. So if those steps don't really, if they're not sufficient to kind of control our allergies, uh, then we start looking at our medical options and our medical therapies. So let's say we're an older animal. Okay, you know what, we're gonna run a blood test and we're gonna check for metabolic diseases that might cause you know, hair loss or itchiness or secondary infections. And if our blood test is clear, we might then look at some skin tests um, to see if there are, let's say bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth, like contributing to the itch. Um, because you know, what can happen with allergies is that you start off with allergies and then you, you, know, you scratch and you, you have a, an affected what we call a skin barrier. And then you can get an overgrowth of the normal organisms in the skin. And so then that makes you itchy as well. Mm. And so we test for that as well. We treat that if we find it. And so if we're kind of at that stage, and we've done, you know, all the you know, keeping them inside and the omega threes and good shampoos and ruled out our metabolic diseases, checked for our secondary infections. Uh, then we look at our group of allergy medications, and there's a few of them out there. Um, mm. The reason being is that it's actually a fairly common problem. Um, we think about a third of medical presentations to vets are skin related and uh, allergies are absolutely the, you know, probably 80% of that workload. So. Um, medically, a few options to look at. Uh, it might sort of go beyond what this conversation is about, I guess. Um, but in a nutshell, we have some tablets that are very safe, very effective. We have injections that are incredibly safe and they're really good at neutralizing the itch. We also have uh, cortisone therapies uh, that are very effective and very affordable. So that's their main benefit. And uh, look, you know, if we're, you know, if we want to go down this path, uh, a really, really good option is referral to a dermatology specialist. Uh, so he works out of our clinic about four times a year. Uh, he's just an incredible brain, this sort of thing. He's a dermatology specialist, so one of the best of the best. And uh, he can even look at not only a second opinion, but uh, he can test your dog to see what they're allergic for, you know, allergic to rather and then formulate injections that can desensitize your dog. Mm. You know, so they stop overreacting. Do you do it for adults too? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, well, humans do it. Yeah, we do yeah. it all the time. Yeah, absolutely, for hay fever and um, 
eczema, that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, in fact, I believe it's our first line therapy uh, for if we're quite severely affected. Yeah, so, there you go. Uh, because if you're they can response, be allergic to um, plants and, and grasses and. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so pollens, grasses, very common allergens. Uh, inside, we have our uh, house dust mites, um, just you know from skin shedding, mm. uh, mold spores from air conditioners, uh, fleas. I think we covered storage mites in dry food. Uh, the list goes on and on. So. Yeah, there you have it. Yeah. So while a change in your dog's skin can be alarming, because it is a bit of a worry when they get a bit of a rash and you can't get rid of it, yeah. there's usually not much to worry about. However, if you if you experience any doubts whatsoever, don't hesitate to see the wonderful team at Cans Vets to figure out what's going on and get to the bottom of that itch.